from heavy winter storms to a historic trip to the final four for the Aztecs to a scandal rocking the Board of Supervisors. It has been a year in San Diego County. Welcome back. I'm Jesse Pagan. Marcella's off tonight. I'm Carlo Chiquetto from the good to the bad. We also worked for you to solve problems affecting you and your community. CBS 8 editor extraordinaire Alex Miller Pastori takes us back through 2023 in San Diego County. The first day of 2023 came pouring in with some heavy showers, a nightmare for those leaving New Year's festivities. Day five now of consecutive days of rain in San Diego County. Like you can actually hear it flowing like it sounds like a running river right now. Look at this plume of moisture coming through San Diego. This is all associated with those atmospheric rivers. Surf is expected to rise as high as 16 feet this morning. It's very cold, it's very rainy. This is not what I was expecting California to be like. The Southwest Saga continues here in San Diego. Long lines and unhappy passengers, many with canceled flights and others left in limbo, not knowing if they'd be getting on a plane today. There is about an hour long line just to put a tag on your bag. It was too late and delayed again. Met us at the curb and said they won't check in any luggage at all. And delayed again. They said it's here somewhere, but it could be anywhere. And finally canceled. I don't have anything but the clothes I have on right now. This is outrageous. <laughs> I mean, really ridiculous. The planes are flying again, but a lot of lost luggage still hasn't made its way back to owners. Ollie Klassen searched for three days until she found her luggage. We came down Two other days with three of us looking everywhere. So I'm really surprised that we found it today. It's like Christmas all over again. I get a thousand dollar bill and then I don't hear from them for three more billings. They just sent me all six bills at one time. How many other people got all these bills all at once? It's a large bill, $16,000. San Diego Public Utilities customers not getting water bills for months, then without any explanation or warning, they'd get a ton of bills all at once, totaling thousands of dollars. If your water use is abnormally high or low, the Public Utilities Department will put a hold on your account as they look into why. If the city is investigating your water bill, the bill will remain at zero and you will not be charged until you get a bill in the mail. You also won't be notified until you suddenly receive a big bill. I think it's just neglect on the part of this city. They're too lazy and they're not well enough staffed. They're prepared to do what they're supposed to. This March Madness run has been the greatest in program history for San Diego State. For the first time in school history, San Diego State is going to the Final Four. Hurley and the Huskies have their dreams come true. Hundreds of San Diego State Aztecs fans showed out to celebrate the historic men's basketball team at Snapdragon Stadium. There's love, you know, win, lose, or draw, they, they by our side.
thousands of migrants continue to wait for the end of Title 42. But immigration officials estimate they could see as many as 10,000 migrants a day after the measure ends this Thursday. Asylum seekers being told to use a mobile app to book an appointment. With hundreds of people trying to access this app, it just doesn't seem like it has the capability of helping any of them, unfortunately. Conditions at the border keep getting worse as the clock ticks down to the end of Title 42. Families with children in the heat struggle in for food and water. The Border Patrol is overwhelmed and this is they just never seen these type of numbers before. They are pretty much stuck in between these two fences that you see just south of San Ysidro. This is where they've been waiting. They've been given little food and they're hungry and they don't know what's going to happen next. I asked everyone, why did you come this far? Why did you come here? And they all answered the same, just like Camilla. I can't enter up she says she wants to enter the United States for a better life. The only way to move forward is without Supervisor Fletcher on this board. I believe he should resign effective immediately. This call to step down now comes just a couple weeks after Supervisor Nathan Fletcher first announced he was checking himself into a treatment center for PTSD, childhood trauma, and alcohol abuse. In the days following that, he announced his pending resignation, admitting an affair with a former MTS employee. <laughs> Breaking news tonight, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says he will resign from the Board of Supervisors at the end of his medical leave. Nathan Fletcher has officially resigned from his seat on the County Board of Supervisors. My goal is to get out there and remind people that there is an election happening on August 15th. One candidate must garner more than 50% of the vote during the primary to assume the remainder of the term that runs until 2027. Monica Montgomery Stepp says tonight she made history as the first black woman to be elected to the San Diego Board of Supervisors. I will be working to rebuild institutions that I think people have lost faith in. Both entrances to the old fries are blocked and gated off, as you can see here. Now, many of our viewers are wondering what's going on with the property. In Cahoots used to be the place where you could boot, scoot, and boogie, but it's been boarded up for years. Yeah, the front door's all chained up. People living around here just want to know, why has this building been vacant for so long? What was supposed to be a 25,000 square foot brewery and event space is now what people living in La Mesa call an eyesore. This has become an eyesore. It is an eyesore. It sits here as an eyesore. This is blight. This is so blight. That building is not a really good representation of what we want La Jolla to look like. We just deserve better. I just want it to be something that when we come into this particular mall that we have something other than this monstrosity to look at. Tom Lukasiewicz has been through way too much as a human being to be the victim of a theft. As you can see, my muscles, my arms, just bones, no more muscles. A father and husband battling a rare muscle disease. Thieves in the middle of the night targeted his mobility van. Someone took my catalytic converter, stole it, cut it off, and uh, that was it. That was the end. Like, what do I do now? By some estimates, because this is a mobility van, it may cost $6,000 to fix. You took my, my ability to get to places that I need to go. As soon as our story aired, donations poured in, along with an offer to fix the van from an auto repair expert named Jeff. I saw your story and I thought, you know what, I think we can help that guy. Service Pros Automotive installed a new catalytic converter and even threw in an oil change. <laughs> Look at that. She's purring like a kitten. Service Pros Automotive did the repair for free. Hey Jeff, you know what? Um, there's not much more I can say, but thank you. Um, thank you so much. Jeff Sevely, CBS 8. And you can count on us to keep working for you in 2024. It was a year. A lot happened. I'm hoping for a little, little calmer one, but somehow I don't think it's in the cards. Hmm. We'll see what happens. We'll be here either way.